So this quick little video is going to redo question 9 from your chapter 5 unit test that I gave you the sample for and for some reason when I got to this part I multiplied these together rather than subtracting them. So I'm going to do it again um, just to make sure that uh, you're not terribly confused by it all. So the first thing you had to do was sketch the two special triangles and it's really good if you've got this nailed now. So you have 1 1 square root 2 for 45 degrees and when you do your 60 60 cut it in half gives you 60 here 30 here 2 1 square root 3. So you should be able to um, figure out what these values are very quickly. The hard part for this question is mainly in the the actual calculation, right? So the sine of 45 degrees, sine here, opposite over hypotenuse, that gives you 1 over root 2. And then 1 minus the cos of 30. The cos of 30, you're up here. Jason over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2. And then you're adding 5 times the tan of 60. Tan of 60, opposite over adjacent, that's root 3 over 1. We'll just put it over 1 so we have all fractions here. And then um, we're multiplying by the sine of 60 degrees. Sine of 60 is here, so opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. And subtracting, yes, thank you, Matthew, the tan of 30. Tan of 30, we're up here, tan adjacent, or sorry, opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. So now, if you do the math very carefully, you expand here, I'd have 1 over root 2 minus root 3 over 2 root 2 plus, I'm just going to multiply these two little ones together, that's 5 root 3, and in the bracket I'm subtracting, so I need a common denominator here. You can't subtract fractions that don't have the same base. So I want to make a common denominator of 2 root 3 which means I'm multiplying root 3 times root 3, which gives me 3. And this one I'm multiplying by 2, top and bottom, which is going to give me 2, whoops, sorry, 2 root 3, 2 over 2 root 3. Okay, did you catch all that? So really, let me just write it in a little bit of red ink here so you see. So I do root 3, and this is time root 3, and this is times root 2, and this is times 2. So we get the same... Um, denominators. Okay, so now that I've done that, um, if I'm going to subtract these two, I need a common denominator as well. So get back the red pen here. So I have root 2 on this side and 2 root 2 here. So I need to make this times 2. So we have the same denominator. So I have 2 root 2 in the denominator and in the top I have 2 minus root 3 over 2 root 2. Okay, now over here I've got 3 over 2 root 3 minus 2 over 2 root 3. That would be 1 over 2 root 3, right? So I have 5 root 3 times 1 over 2 root 3. And when I multiply these, you can see I would have 5 root 3, so over 2 root 3, so these root 3s are going to cancel, and I get 5 over 2. That's all I have. So I have 2 minus root 3 over 2 root 2 minus 5 over 2. Now in order to, um, sorry it was plus, plus 5. So in order to combine these two together now I need to make a common denominator again over here. So this times root 2, this times root 2. And I'm going to end up with 2 minus root 3 plus 5 root 2 all over 2 root 2. Now make sure you don't try to cancel these out. Remember you can't cancel anything out unless they're all multiplied together. And that's your final answer. And that would have been the correct solution. I'm sorry, but thank you very much to Matthew for pointing that out to me.